A3 we are on? We're on page uh, Dalad, Dav Dalad, yeah. side A, we're near the bottom, very near, close to the bottom. We were working on the... Hoi uh, Sabchus Are we on, David? Yeah? Okay. Dav Dalad, page four, side A. Of course, we're in Masechet Sukkah. Let the Talmud Tish begin. In the previous class, we learned about a sukkah that's too tall. So the halacha is that if the schach is too high from the floor of the sukkah, it's not a kosher sukkah. And there were a variety of reasons that were offered right in the beginning of this Masechet either because you don't see the schach, it's not nicker, or because that becomes the kind of building which would typically not be temporary and represent something which is most often permanent when it's that size. At any rate, reasons aside, if it's too tall, you got a problem. What do you do? So one of the things we learned about is raising the floor. At a sukkah, raise the floor up, you can make yourself a kosher sukkah. Well, does it have to be wall-to-wall carpet? What if you raise a pedestal up in the middle of the sukkah? Would that make a sukkah kosher? These are the kind of things we discussed. And we used all kinds of creative Reno ideas to make the sukkah work. In, in today's class, we're going to learn about the opposite. A sukkah that's too short. The sukkah has to have a minimum size. If the sukkah is not 10 tfachim high, or it's not seven tefachim by seven tefachim, which is really not very big, about four inches, four and a half inches, is a tefach. So then it's not a kosher sukkah. It's called a dira surucha. It's called being squashed into an uncomfortable position. It's not called finding shelter. But the sukkah has to be sheltered. So what to do when we have a sukkah that's too short, too small? A sukkah that you can crawl into, but the sukkah that you cannot sit in. A sukkah that you can squash yourself in, but you cannot shelter, find normal shelter. What happens then? So the Gemara raises the question and then begins to offer a creative solution. The sukkah is less than 10 tvachim high. So what could you do? He doesn't have more sukkah. He doesn't have the ability to raise the roof. He can't build a new building. It doesn't happen. It doesn't have time. They go home. You can, you can expand the sukkah by going down. So, he digs deep in order to take the sukkah and turn it from a crawl space into shelter. So, what's the question? Really, there will be no question. If a sukkah is less than 10 tvachim, let's say a sukkah is 5 tvachim high. Not very high. But yay big, like literally a crawl space. And the person digs 5 tvachim in the ground. And now the sukkah is enough to find shelter in. It's not comfortable. It's not a nice place to be. But if you need to find shelter, whether from inclement weather or, or, or you have to hide, that's a place for shelter. So if you dig down 10 tfachim, 5 tfachim above ground, 5 tfachim beneath the ground, the hollow area of the sukkah has the size of a sukkah. There's no question. That's great. <laughs> but maybe that didn't happen. What happens if this area of the sukkah was maybe... Maybe fairly large. Maybe it, was, maybe it was six feet wide, maybe 10 feet wide. But it was a crawl space. And you don't have the ability now to dig a, an area like that, dig up an area like that. That, w- that would be a big deal. So you're not capable of digging up this big area. You got a shovel. Uh, Sukkot comes in in 20 minutes. You can dig a space maybe for yourself to fit into, but that's about it. So the question becomes, Im yesh misvas chakak. If there is from the edge of the ditch that you've, the indentation that you've created, ula koisel, into the walls of the sukkah, gimel tvachim, if there's more than three tvachim, which is not a lot of space, psula, and then the pasuk would, the sukkah would be rendered unfit. Do you understand why? Same logic as the itzdaba. Well, it's not the same logic as the itzdaba, because in the itzdaba, you could have from the platform that you built to the walls, for Amot. For Amot. And here, it's a very small amount of space. Three Tvachim is like a half Amot. So something has changed in us. We're not sure what it is right now. But 
the Gemara, as a matter of fact, has told us if there's three Tvachim or more, Psula. Let's just turn the page and finish off the Halacha, and then we'll begin to discuss this and try to wrap our heads around it. Pachus Mishlei Tvachim, if there's less than three Tvachim, Kshera, then it would be kosher. And of course, what's the Gemara going to ask? The Gemara is going to ask, why is it different? Why is it different than the platform? Why did we have so much leeway with the platform that we could have between the platform and the wall of the sukkah for Amot? And if you remember, we invoked this theoretical concept of a bent wall, Doifen Akuma. We said at Halacha Lameisha Misina that the wall was vertical and then it took a little turn. It's still the same wall. It looks like a ceiling. It's really a wall. It's a bent wall. But we're not saying that for some reason now. We don't say the wall is vertical and then bends. We don't seem to be saying the same thing. So the Gemara is soon going to ask the question, but let's first take a look in Rashi. Let's try to understand what we've learned so far. Rashi says, Akba, he says, this refers to a guma, to a ditch, be'emtza, in the middle of the sukkah. So we say, That means if you use the hollow space that was created in the ground, known in Hebrew as a guma, as a vacancy, as an empty space, a ditch, if you use that empty area and you kind of see the entire, as a, from, the, from the bottom of the ground all the way to the schach as one single structure, so then, guma, if it's self-understood, Rashi says, that in the ditch that you dig, it would have to be the actual circumference or size of a kosher sukkah. A kosher sukkah is seven tvachim by seven tvachim, which is the size of what we would call a normal able-bodied man, can fit in, head and shoulders, seven tvachim, you can fit in, you can turn around, there's not a lot of room, but it's not like a coffin. You're not, you're not, you're not squashed into so this tiny seven space. Seven tvachim by seven tvachim. Yeah. It's more than uh, three tefachim from the edge. If it's more than words, three tefachim from the, the edge. Sukkah, the sukkah is, let's say, the, the whole Let's say the, slow, the sukkah is, is four amot. They say you have a big structure, whatever it is. Okay. And he dug the hole in the middle. Right. Okay. Or a little bit more than three tefachim over. He's got the, the, uh, the size, the floor size. And that's considered a ditch. So? It's considered a non kosher sukkah. Why not? What's missing? connection to the wall. Walls are missing. A sukkah needs not only schach, but a sukkah needs walls. Otherwise, we just put up a canopy and throw schach on top. That doesn't work. The sukkah is primarily the place that seeks shelter under the schach, but the sukkah needs so the walls. The wall has to be continuous and straight. Well, there's halachas about That's the wall. Whether it's four walls, or three walls, or two and a half walls, but you have to have walls. Here, no, here they would the not... Wall be bent at the bottom? Well, it, it could be. Three tfachim. That's the only leeway you get. Three tfachim. We're going to talk about this. We're going to try to understand this. So, the, here's the interesting question. When we talk about demarcation of space, which is ostensibly what a sukkah is about, we oftentimes kind of wander off into the laws of Shabbos. Because in the laws of Shabbos, there's something called the Shush Rabim. Private domain or public domain. And in, in the laws of Shabbos, if you have a ditch that's even smaller than seven by seven, so four tvachim by four tvachim, if, if, it, has, if it has ten tvachim deep, it, that's, that's already a space. That's a space. Th those would be considered walls. And the question, of course, we might ask over here is, if this would be considered a machitza for the laws of Shabbos, if for, from Shabbos' perspective, which is halachic reality, remember we're dealing with halachic reality. We don't care about people's perception of whether you look at that as shelter or not, whether you see that as a, a space which is set aside or not. What's relevant for us is what does the halacha say? We're, we're the currency of our negotiations are now oh, we're only using one currency. That's the currency of Torah, Torah currency, halachic reality. So halachic reality ordains that that's a space. So the question is, if halachic or reality ordains that's a space, why doesn't it work for the sukkah? It's, it's on the same market. It's the same currency. It's a commodity on the same currency. Why, why, why can't it work? So the Ritva actually asks this question. And the Ritva says something very interesting. He says, 
It's true that halacha is the currency in, the, in these negotiations. That's true. However, what's required to make a Rishus HaYachid on Shabbos, a, a private domain or a public domain in Rishus of Shabbos, and what's required to create a sukkah is not one and the same. It's different principles. Same currency, different principle. And that is to say that from a perspective of the laws of Shabbos, to create a space you need an area which is set aside or apart. And as long as it's set aside or apart, it already becomes a space onto itself. For example, in the laws of Shabbos, if you had a public domain, in the middle of your public domain, there's a large barrel, as you often see, you know, those, like a garbage can or a barrel. It's right there. It, that becomes a private domain. The barrel would be a private domain. The inside of the barrel. Well, th forget the inside even, if it's a sealed barrel. So if you were to, in the laws of Shabbos, take something from the top of this barrel, think of a sealed barrel, okay? Like a, a, an oil drum. Take something from the top of the drum and then walk six feet in the laws of Shabbos, you would be violating Shabbos. In fact, you wouldn't even have to walk six feet if you're taking it from the drum and moving it. You're already taking something from a private domain into a public domain. But, but the drum doesn't have any walls. The drum doesn't have a, it's not a shelter. Right, it's a space unto itself. So in the laws of Shabbos, what's required is a space unto itself. Since that's a space unto itself, since when you're kind of moseying along in public domain and you suddenly encounter this barrel, it's going to be a problem. You're going to trip over it. It, it, it doesn't exactly kind of go with the flow. So it's considered to be separated, taken out of circulation. It's not part of the terrain. It's not part of the regular pedestrian area. Similarly, we have something called a muck and p'tur. A muck and p'tur could be Sometimes they have these, these little poles next to fire hydrants, which are like less than three tvachim high. So if it's less than three tvachim high, it actually would be what's called a mokim p'tur. It's called a place that's exempt. Sorry, it has to be over three tvachim, between three tvachim and ten tvachim. Three tvachim is part of the ground. Three tvachim is considered to be part of the same continuum. Once it's above three tvachim, till ten tvachim. Once it gets to ten tvachim, that, that could already be a... a a place onto itself. So you have this small pole, which is like the size of a tefach, and it's above three tefachim, that would be called a mokim p'tur. It's not public, it's not private. In other words, from a Shabbos perspective, from the halacha that governs the reality of Shabbos, we do not need shelter, we need space. Space that is set aside, space that has its own demarcation. So once it is set aside, once it's taken out of circulation, once it's not part of public domain, because the pedestrians are going to encounter it, or kind of, you can't, you can't navigate it easily, it gets in your way, well then it's no longer part of that terrain. It's a space onto itself. So if it has the right amount of size, it's going to be considered a private domain. Whereas on Shabbos, says the Ritva, uh, and Sukkah, pardon me, we don't need a separate space, we need a shelter big difference. You know from the laws of Shabbos, if you have a canopy with a roof on top, that's a private domain. It's a private domain. You don't need walls on Shabbos. The fact that there is a canopy, like you have an awning sometimes. Uh, you don't, I don't see it in Toronto, but in, in New York it's very common, at least it used to be. People have these uh, like canvas. So you have this awning coming up uh, from the store down, these wind up awnings. Yeah, yeah, wind, that's what I'm talking wind up awnings. Yeah. You've got to go on the road to go around. Well, I, I would presume that you're, if you're observing Shabbos, you're not carrying anything in the public domain anyway. So, <laughs> but, but yeah, that would be going from a private domain to a public domain. Let, let me put it to you a little differently. If you were in one of these uh, storefront shoals, you'd be able to carry from the shoal, out of the shoal, under the canopy, but not further. You follow? Mm -hmm. Why? Because a canopy makes it a space for itself. It creates, a, it creates an independent space. So the Ritva says, you need to understand that just because you're using the same currency doesn't mean that you can import or export from one area to the other with impunity. Why? Because there are separate variables. There are different principles, operating principles. The operating principles of Shabbos is certainly halacha. Of course it's halacha, halachic reality. But what's required, the requisite to make something a private or public domain has nothing to do with shelter. In fact, many private domains are totally unsheltered. Yet for a sukkah, what's required here is shelter. The sukkah has to have some kind of space which provides some kind of shelter. Now, I'll tell you a little secret. The walls of the sukkah don't have to be floor to ceiling. The walls of the sukkah can go halfway up, for example. 
That's a perfectly kosher sukkah. In fact, in hot places, I'm told that's what they do. Like in, in Miami, people will tell me about that. I have friends living in Texas, told me it can be 100 degrees on sukkahs. 100 degrees, you sit in a sukkah, you, can, you melt. So what do they do? They have walls going halfway. A scenic sukkah. <laughs> so if you do that, that's fine. Why? Because there's a, there's a shelter. You're in a space. You have a lot of windows. You can tiki see. Bar. Huh? A tiki bar. A, a tiki bar is a, is a shelter. It's an area. I didn't say it's a shelter from a gale storm or a hurricane, but then again, the sukkah isn't a shelter like that. But it's a temporary shelter. So the Ritva says that's what you have to understand here. That's what you have to understand. And that's why what works for Shabbos doesn't work here, and what's necessary is actual walls. So in as much as earlier in our classes we talked about the most important thing about the sukkah is not the walls, but rather the schach. And we said that the name sukkah, the word sukkah, shares a common etymology with the word schach, which means the shrubbery or organic cover. Nonetheless, what we still need to have is walls. Yes, the walls can be made of anything, whereas the schach, of course, cannot. It has a very specific limitation to what does or doesn't work for kosher schach. However, however, even though the sukkah can be made, or the walls can be made of virtually anything, there is still a requirement for walls. And here's an interesting example, which many people don't realize. You know, they have these canvas sukkahs. Oh, not so popular anymore. They've come on to easier and better things. But it was very popular in the 70s. That was like the first, you know, kind of a... Pop-up sukkah. Pop, well, it wasn't really pop-up. It was, it was a pain in the neck to put those things up. <laughs> these metal things. It, 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 wasn't that, it, was, it, was, it was a traveling sukkah, but not a very easy to put up sukkah. Well, that was the technology of the 70s. So, th- so those sukkahs oftentimes were made with canvas walls which the walls were easy to put up, but the frame was the problem. The frame was a pain in the neck. But once you got the frame up, you just draped the walls around. They had these big rings and you fit them on. But the problem was, very often, the canvas walls would blow in the wind. And they would move more than what was permissible according to halacha. And that is? And that is three tvachim. Three tvachim is about this much. So some of those canvas sukkahs were very loose. If they would be tight, you have a problem. You wouldn't be able to get the canvas around the, tra- around the frame. So they made it loose so as to make it easy. But sometimes because it was so loose, it became so easy that it wasn't even kosher. And there are various halacha ways to get around that. One way around that is to you know, have a couple of wires that go across every, every tefach, you have a wire, and then it makes, but then again, it's not, it's not makeshift. Uh, somewhere in the 90s, somebody figured out you can make a sukkah out of parachute. And parachute much more pliant, it stretches much more easily, and that's quite taunt. So that would actually not be a problem. The point, of course, of this discussion or dialogue is that it's necessary not only to have walls made of whatever it may be which provide modesty or, or concealment that it conceals you but it actually has to be somewhat stationary or they're not walls of a sukkah so curtains in the typical sense would not work Okay, so now this is the, 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 the basic operating principle that, that we've introduced here. We need to have walls, and we don't have walls. And since we don't have walls, well, we have a problem. Okay, so what's the obvious question? I said, I don't understand this. <laughs> we, had, we spent two whole classes talking about the doif and akuma, talking about the bent wall. Incidentally, does the wall have to be straight up, or can it... Uh, That's exactly what we're talking about now. No. Can the wall bend? No. The wall, let's say it's made out of plywood. Yeah. Can it have... One set of plywood, then 12 inches. Then this is exactly the issue then. here. The, kind of a wall, and then another wall. This is exactly the question that we have over here. In other words, not a continuous wall, not the double. This is exactly the question. Let me just point out to you that a, a board, a plywood board, is 10 tefachim wide. So once you put the plywood board on the sukkah, assuming that the schach actually is over the, ply, the plywood, it's already a kosher sukkah. The second panel is superfluous. Assuming that it's on the bottom. Well, it's in within three tvachim. That's called lavud. We'll see what that is in a moment. So this is the question that the Gemara is going to ask now. I do not understand. Previously, we had this bent wall business. And we, it's halacha l'moyesha mesinai. It's an oral tradition going back to Moses, going back to Mount Sinai. And now all of a sudden, you're giving me such limitations. I have to dig three tvachim. It's a small space. What happened? So the Gemara asked this question, this exact question, my shno, what is the difference? What is the difference, says the Gemara? Why is it 
that now we need to have pachos mishloi shatvachim. Now, before we continue with the Gemara, we should take a look in Rashi. Rashi says, what is pachos mishloi shatvachim? Pachos mishloi shatvachim, we said, is kshera. That would make it a kosher sukkah. Why? Rashi says, kilavud. Lovud means it becomes an extension. Like it's contiguous. Lovud means it really isn't separated. And this is also halacha l'moshe misinai. Which means a vacancy of three tfachim is not actually a vacancy. So for example, if you had schach, and the schach was placed three tfachim away from the wall of the sukkah, less than three tfachim, it would still be a kosher sukkah. Why? We would employ the concept of lavud. Lavud means it's basically connected. What would happen if it's four tfachim, or even three full tfachim away? So you have your walls of your sukkah, and you have the schach hanging, and there's a space between the wall of the sukkah and between the schach. If there's more than three tfachim, it's not a kosher sukkah. Now what if you put a plywood here? Then it's a bent wall. Then it's a bent wall. But I have to have something. That's, that something has to be there. Whereas when we talk about lavud, nothing has to be there. Lavud is considered an extension. And that's halacha lamesha mesinai. V'chashvina leke ilo hachak lavud magi ada kaisel. So if there is a hole that was dug, and the hole that was dug is within three, in, three tfachim of the wall, so then it's considered as if the wall actually and the hole are essentially connected. We, we see the space between the end of the, of the, of the, of the ditch you dug and between where the wall begins, we see the space as non-extant. The space is, does, it's, not, it's not an issue. It's not, it's not an interruption. Up to three tfachim is not an interruption. Once you hit three tfachim, you've got an interruption. So it's very interesting. The bent wall has to be a wall. It can't be air. But if you have nothing there, if you have three tfachim, you're still okay. And sometimes it will happen in a sukkah where the sukkah isn't well covered and you could have up to three tfachim with no schach in it. It would still be a kosher sukkah. So this is the idea of kilavod, halacha l'mei shem yisinai, v'chashvin Rashi explains the jurisprudence here. The, the way this works is we consider it to be ke'ilu achak lavod, as if as if the ditch is extended, as if the ditch actually magia, as if it actually reaches Ada Kaisel. Rashi does something very interesting now. He, he kind of in, gives us like a dictionary. He interprets the word lavod. He says, lavod means sniff, like an extension. Dover shema'arichin oisoy ayede snifim. You know, things that have extensions to them? It's an extension. The thing, the thing, Extends, you know, like a cane sometimes extends, a pole extends. It's an extension. It's the same thing. That's how we look at this halachically, as if it's one extension. Kedei lisnoif chakak el chakak, as if to to connect the the ditch to another ditch. As long as it's within three, three tvachim, we'd be okay. This wouldn't be an issue. So now we understand the business of three tvachim. But the Gemara's obvious question is: It's not empty. There's soil, there's ground, there's a floor. Why can't it simply be an extension of the bent wall? There's a wall that goes all the way down to the floor. The floor continues on. Why does the wall only bend on top? Why doesn't the wall bend on the bottom? That's the question. What's the difference? Earlier when the sukkah was too tall and it had to be somehow diminished. So that it could be a kosher sukkah. So earlier, what do we say? The amrit we say, pachos me arba ames, as long as the wall is less than four amot away from the opening that the schach is covering, we're okay. Four amot, six feet, it's a lot of space. So earlier we said, up to, up to, up to, up to ara amot. But here, why do we suddenly come along and say, amrit pachos me gibbled tvachim? All you get is less than a foot. Well, you get is three tefachim. Now we're talking about two different principles. Obviously, we're talking about different principles. But this, in and of itself, is the question, the query of the Gemara. What is the difference? What is the difference? So the Gemara says the following. Hasam, the Isay le 
Pachos me arba'amis sagi. Over there, there is a wall. There is a wall. This sukkah does not have wall issues. What does it have? Height issues, space issues. This is the previous sukkah. This is the sukkah of the previous class, the sukkah that was too tall. The wall is a wall. The schach is schach. It has a height malfunction. So, so we say, if the wall is a wall, it's a question of making an extension to a wall that's already extant. So to take a wall that already exists and to create an extension to a wall that exists is logical. So, hasam, the isi and there is a wall. Okay, so less than becomes an extension of it. It becomes bent. Hocha l'shavye l'doifin. Here we don't have a wall. As the Me'iri says, because it's a dira srucha. It's not a shelter. Those aren't walls. It's basically a schach without walls. There is no wall. Five tfachim is not a wall. So because there is no wall, what we're trying to do is create a wall. If you have no wall, you have nothing to bend onto. You have to have a wall and then you can bend. Here you have no wall. We have to create a wall. So therefore, since we have to create a wall, pachas mishleisha, less than three tvachim, fine, that works. In? Eloi, Eloi. So let's think about this. Here you have, let's say here's your wall. Okay? Very small wall of the sukkah. Here's a wall. Here's three tvachim. And here is a ditch you're digging down. So essentially what's happening is that this wall kind of formed a single wall. In order, the only way it could form a single wall was if the space from point A to point B is less than three tfachim because then it's called lovud, which means extended. Lovud means attached, it's extended. I didn't, I, it can't be a bent wall because in order for a wall, if this would be 20 tfachim high, 20 amos high, and then it goes this way, so I can say, I have a wall and it bends. I don't have a wall here. Since I don't have a wall, hal- halachic reality does not see a wall here. This, this, the term wall doesn't apply. Call it whatever you want. It's a potential wall. It could be a wall. It isn't a wall now. So in order to make it a wall, I have to, I have, to have a wall. I have to have height. So if I have height going down, and, and it comes down like this, and then it kind of moves a little bit, which is lovud, a natural extension. So it's a wavy wall, but it's a wall. What's the minimum height of a, of a wall? A minimum height of a wall would be 10 tfachim. Less than 10 tfachim isn't a wall. So if you don't have a wall, you don't have ability to make bent walls because you don't have a wall to begin with. So the minimum size, I just want to get to the 10 tfachim. Yes. And that sukkah, you had 20 amotai. Let's take a look in Rashi. Rashi says like this. Hasam de isi ledeifen pachos me'arba amis. Hasam there, in the previous example, in the case that we spoke of with the sukkah that had walls and had schach, but just too much height, the ika shem deifen, shem deifen, it's called a wall. You're not creating a wall. The chol deifen she'eni pachis miyud, shmoi deifen, any deifen, any wall, which is not less than 10 tvachim, is called a wall. Va'afilu gavoya ad l'rakia, even if it's a skyscraper, it's still a wall. A very tall wall, but it's a wall. Even what you would call in English a fence. If you have a fence which is like two feet high, it's not a fence. You walk right over it. That, that, that's not an impediment. That's, that's like an obstacle. An obstacle is not a wall. A wall, once you get to ten tfachim, no normal person can walk over ten tfachim. You have to be like, you know, one of these basketball players to walk over ten tfachim. A normal person can't walk like that. So an old person can climb a wall, you can navigate a wall, but you can't walk over it. If it's smaller than 10 tfachim, it's an obstacle. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Obstacles, we don't have bent obstacles, we have bent walls. So therefore, hilkach, ad arba ames, since you have a wall in place, until four ames, chaser mashu, a little bit less than four ames, we could say, agamre rachmona, lemaisha, we learnt. Agamri comes from the word Gemara. Very interesting expression there. Agamri Rachmana, the Torah taught us Lamaisha from all the way from Maisha Rabbeinu. This law of Doifen Akuma, bent wall. I have a bent wall. So, bent wall is a beautiful concept, but the only thing bent wall needs in order for it to be bent, what do you have to have? A wall. I have to have a wall. Once I have a wall, I can have a bend. 
But if I have no wall, I have an obstacle. I can't create walls with a bend. I can use creativity to extend the wall. I can't use creativity to create a wall. So you have to have somebody to work with, so to speak. You know that, that uh, famous little joke where the scientists had a fight with God and they said, anything you could do, we could do also, God. So God said, really? Show me, create a man. So they said, okay, they go out to gather soil. God said, give me back my dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Having something to work with to change form, the, uh, people can change form. You can always change form. You take one object, you change form. But here you want to create something ex nihilo. <laughs> Creativity doesn't work when you have nothing to work with. I have to have something to modify. A bent wall is a modification. So if somebody has walls, but they're dilapidated, they're ugly, they're broken, I can renovate the walls. But if I don't have walls, say, okay, renovate the obstacle. There's no renovation here. There's no walls. I have to build a wall. I can't renovate a wall. There isn't a wall. So this is not a sukkah reno. This is actually sukkah creation. That's the difference. In the previous class, we called it the sukkah rescue reno. Because with the renovation, rescue the situation, we use the creativity of the bent wall up to four tvachim, up to four abbas, and that worked. But here, we have a whole different set of variables. Hacha, here, however, says Rashi, pochus miyud ein shem doifin alav. Less than ten tvachim. It does not get called wall altogether. Elahash to hudabi inun l'shavi doifin. What we are seeking to create is a wall, not a wall extension. We don't have a wall. Hilkach, therefore, b'mesha eni deifin le'agamri rachmana. In something that isn't wall, the Torah didn't come and teach us. Oh, no wall. Use bends to make a wall. You can't build a wall out of bends. You have to have a wall. Then you can bend. The deifin akuma agamri. We learned the the halacha, the ver, the verbiage is deifin akuma, a bent wall. Okay, so we learned about a bent wall. V'hai lav deifin. This is not a bent wall. Why not? Because it's not a wall. It's bent, but it's not a wall. The Hilkach, therefore, Pachas mi gimel tvachim, less than gimel tvachim, b'chol duchti, in every halacha. This is a currency which is negotiable across the whole vast corpus of Torah. Anywhere where, where space is an issue, up to three tvachim is considered to be a non-existent space. It's just a continuation, just an extension. So that's another story. Lovadu, 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 chopper, dummy, fine. That's just an extension. It's just, it moved a little. It just bent a little. So it's not a problem. Ve'iloi, loi, if it's lovud. So then it's, a, then it's a, an extension. An extension? Extensions you can always have. You don't have to have a wall to have an extension. Anything can be extended. An obstacle can be extended also. But when I'm talking about a wall, ah, once you achieve wall status, then you can use creative halachic ideology or theology or principles or, 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 or theories. The theorem all of a sudden become, has something to work with, so then it's, it's applicable. But in this case, there'll be nobody home. There's no wall here. We could use lavud, but that's the max that we could use. Now, here it gets, gets very interesting. What happens if you have your guma, okay? You have three walls of your sukkah, maybe four walls, and you have between the two side walls, you have less than three tvachim. But on either side, on your, on, your, on your south and north, you have much more than three tvachim. Is it a kosher sukkah? No. Why not? You need three walls. You need three walls. So if it would be within three, it wouldn't matter. The fourth one wouldn't matter as we learned previously. But you need to have a minimum always of three walls. And therefore, from Rashi's perspective, the concept of lovud can be used only if there is seven by seven, as we learned earlier. You have to have the place of a sukkah. So I have the place of a sukkah, and now it's a question of kind of joining this part of the sukkah to that part of the sukkah as an extension. Together it can form or comprise a wall. That works. However, the shear, if it doesn't have the size of a sukkah, you can't use lavud to create a sukkah either. Lavud can connect a, su- a space of a sukkah to another space. But you can't use lavud to create a sukkah where there's no space of a sukkah altogether. So for example, if the ditch would be smaller than seven by seven tvachim, a little tiny ditch of three tvachim by three tvachim wouldn't have a sukkah. Even if it's within three tvachim of the sukkah, even if the sukkah itself is actually larger, that wouldn't work for you. Why? Because you need to have a sukkah. So if you have a sukkah, you can have lavud. You can use creativity to put the sukkah together. If you have seven by seven, you can use creativity so to create the, the walls. So the total of the space plus that's three tvachim for lavud makes up to ten. That's, that's correct. And now if you would crouch in the sukkah in the area that's only five tvachim high, and you would crouch there, you would still fulfill the mitzvah. As long as there's three walls of an actual sukkah area, then the sukkah extends, as we learned in the, in the previous class as well. But you have to have that minimum amount. 
Otherwise, uh, as they say, there's nobody home. So, the interesting thing is that, that the tour is of the opinion that the only place that would be kosher is in the ditch itself. The tour says only in the ditch itself. However, the Beis Yosef seems to argue with the tour, and in Shulchan Aruch, it, se- it seems to s- indicate otherwise. Now, th- we don't have this chapter in Alta Rebbe Shulchan Aruch. Unfortunately, it got lost. It was, it was burned to the fire. So we never, we never, we don't, we don't, we don't, Alta Rebbe's ruling is. The Mishnah Bruder uh, wants to, uh, he kind of leans in the direction of the tour. He says, you know, even though the Beis Yosef and Shulchan Aruch permits the entire sukkah to crouch there, he says, no, really, we would. Well, if it's an extension, it's an extension of something. And right. It becomes that something to which it extends. Correct. And therefore, he would say, it has, you have to be in the hole. Get in the hole if you want to be in the sukkah. Otherwise, you're around the sukkah. You're not actually in the sukkah. Shulchan Aruch doesn't seem like that, but uh, the Mishnah Bruh seems to, to lean very heavily on the opinion of, of the Tur. And, and the reason would be, the Taz explains the reason, is because the rest of it is called Dira Srucha. It's, called, it's, not, it's not a shelter. It's a, it's a crawl space. You're crouching. It, you don't have an actual area where you're able to, to so to speak, uh, live or, or find shelter or, or function. And because that's the case, it wouldn't work for you at all. Well, you can't really... It, it, they defined it as 10 by 10 as the uh, as less than 10 by 10 to be dira sukha. therefore if only 7 of that is dug out you're still in the dira sukha in, in no a sukkah doesn't no 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 no, no, no Ami a sukkah has to be 10 tfachim high it doesn't have to be 10 tfachim the circumference doesn't have to be 10 tfachim the circumference has to be 7 tfachim 7 tfachim is sufficient 7 tfachim so, so this, this, of course, that, that would become, become the question. What happens if a sukkah that's bumpy? Some of it is ten tfachim, some of it's not ten tfachim. So, but Pashtas, we would say, as long as there's an area of seven by seven that is, even if the sukkah gets a little bit small or crouchy at certain points, it would still be a kosher sukkah. Then, and of course, you could ask me, like, you know, how relevant is this? Yeah? Go speak to the Israeli soldiers who were stationed in the Golan on, sukkah, on Sukkot of 1973 and find out how practical it was when they were literally living in bunkers and they wanted to make a sukkah and there were some of these very, very small areas and some of it wasn't even 10 tefachim high and they created these temporary sukkahs. They wanted to be in a sukkah. So it's, not, it's really not so simple. Like you, Halacha cannot always rely on all things being even because sometimes all things are not even. And, and the question then is, under the most extenuating circumstances, what's the bare minimum? What's the modicum? The war years? And ghettos, people built sukkahs, went on the craziest mesiris nefesh to be able to fulfill the mitzvah. So you, you want to know that at very least you're satisfying the modicum, the bare minimum of the halacha. It doesn't mean that we have to crawl into tiny sukkahs like this. And you know, we, we, should, we should have a beautiful sukkah. And we should have a large sukkah. And that's great. But they have something called pop-up sukkahs for people who are on the road. You could in no time pop yourself into a little sukkah that's seven by seven. I've been in them. It works. It's even possible, in theory, for a person to pull over to the side of the road. You can open two car doors. The car doors are less than three tvachim from the ground. The area of between two car doors and most car doors gives you seven tvachim by seven tvachim. You could have like a bamboo mat. You can put it over your car doors and you can make yourself a temporary sukkah. Three. Yeah. Why not? What about the... Oh, the car. Ah. One wall and well, the, the car... The car we, we have a doifin akuma. Each. We'd have a bent wall. The car itself would be a bent wall if it's not four tefachim, if it's six feet wide. It gets very creative, you know, like uh, two walls you have, where do you get a third wall? Or maybe you put up a third wall. There, there, are, there are creative ways, so to speak, for people who are careful not to eat outside the sukkah, not even to drink out of the sukkah. There are creative ways of, of doing it. And of course, the halacha has to deal with all of these things. And if you know the halacha, then you can be creative. Can and then you. <laughs> Just tall enough. <laughs> the convertible might be a daif and akuma. That, that, might, that might work. Your bent wall might work over here. But as long as you have a wall, the question is, is the, is the inside of the car itself ten tfachim? From the floor of the car. I know, outside the car. When, it, when the floor of the car is a ten tfachim. Some cars are, some cars aren't. SUV. SUV, SUV for sure is. SUV, yeah. <laughs> a convertible could be, definitely isn't. So yeah. really, it would depend on the situation. The bottom line is that uh, this is conversations from antiquity that are as relevant as a Lamborghini. It's uh, meaningful in today's day and age. And those are some of the principles now we've learned. So we learned about the tall sukkah, we learned about the short sukkah, and creative solutions to try to make things work. 
And with this, we shall conclude our study of Mesechet Sukkot for this year. I wish everybody a Gemar Chatimah Tova. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should grant all of us a year full of sweetness and goodness. And from the holiday of Yom Kippur, in which we celebrate atonement, or sometimes as it's known as at one mint, one with, one, oneness with Hashem, we should from Yom Kippur go into the embrace of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is what the sukkah is supposed to proverbially represent. And that's why it's Man Sem a time of joy when we're all sitting together in the embrace of the sukkah. Hopefully our sukkahs will be a little bigger <laughs> and a little nicer. And of course, the greatest thing of all will be to sit in the grand sukkah of David HaMelech. May it be speedily and in our days. Amen.